Good morning, everybody. My name is Carolina Corret, and like all of you, I'm directly affected by the decisions the corporations behind education in America make. Such heavy corporate involvement in the education system begs the question, to what extent do the corporations behind education in America prepare their content and programs for commercial profit? Corporations such as Pearson, McGraw-Hill, Harcourt Education, or Riverside Publishing have all been able to weasel their way into the education system through legislation such as George W. Bush's No Child Left Behind Act or Barack Obama's Race to the Top Act, which require schools to administer standardized tests in order to receive federal funding. With this, the corporations are able to swoop in and provide testing material, taking advantage of the market. The implementation of Common Core Standards serves really only to prime schools for the products that the corporations make, according to Mark Mason, a history professor at Fordham University. With this, the, the corporations are able to swoop in and provide textbooks and standardized tests al aligned with these standards across the nation. So this map from the Common Core Standards website itself shows that 42 out of 50 states in the U.S. implemented Common Core Standards fully, as well as five U.S. territories and the District of Columbia. This means that each and every state or territory in green is inclined to purchase Common Core textbooks or use standardized tests that are aligned with this curriculum, which is all money in the pockets of those corporations that are making them. On the flip side, these corporations have a lot to offer. They have resources, capital, investors, and technology, including programs such as Pearson My Math Lab, McGraw Hill Connect, or HMH Think Central, which provides students with access to their textbooks as well as practices to aid in their learning. The problem is, despite all of this, the US isn't performing well on a global education scale. The scores of 15-year-olds taking the 2015 Program for International Students Assessment are shown here in a chart made by the Pew Research Center. The ones in dark blue indicate a significantly higher score than the U.S., while the ones in light blue indicate a similar score and yellow indicates a lower score. In all three categories, Singapore, Japan, and Finland scored significantly higher than the U.S. Why? They don't implement as many standardized tests. They implement few, if any, and when they do, they don't hold their teachers accountable for the failures of students. Mm -hmm. The U.S. should take notes. <laughs> Additionally, Teachers have administrators on their backs. They have so much pressure to perform on these standardized tests because with value-added analysis, teachers are paid based on how well their students perform on these standardized tests. This means that they teach to the tests. They want the students to get exactly, to learn exactly what's going to be on the test. This strips the students from any spontaneity. Instead of inquiring about the world around them, they're learning how to effectively bubble in an answer sheet. I mean. How many of you have had a teacher who's more concerned with you passing the FSA than they are with your understanding or interest in the material? Enough said. Additionally, most of the time, these tests are ineffective. They have network errors, obscure questions, or absurd passages. Pearson had to recall a portion of an eighth grade language arts test in 2012 due to the ambiguous nature of the test questions pertaining to the passage, the hair, and the pineapple a story about a pineapple racing a hare. Regardless of whether or not this has happened again, you're probably familiar with the frustration that comes with sitting down to take a standardized test and being rendered unable because of network errors or because it logged you out halfway through. There are plenty of ways to reform the education system, but two of the most prominent ways would be to either scrap standardized testing or just revoke the legislation that allows the corporations the in in the first place. $20 billion. That's the value of the standardized testing and textbook market industry in America. With all this money, students aren't learning, teachers aren't teaching. The only ones really gaining anything from this are the corporations that implement them. Mm -hmm. What questions might you have? <laughs> Thank you. questions for you. How did you select the strategy to use to gather the information? Well, instead of going straight to a Google search, I decided to go like straight to scholarly journals and evidence so I can see really the shortcomings of the, 
the system that's in place in order to determine whether or not the corporations are actually helping. If the standardized tests and common core standards were helping, I wouldn't have an argument. But since the U.S. isn't doing well on a global scale and since the curriculum is so rigid, I decided to go, it kind of made my argument that the, the corporations are in it for profit. So if I would have just gone to a Google search, which I could have done, I would have gotten more opinions because a lot of people are against the corporations there. Okay. Uh, and if you had more time, what additional research would you have uh, real related to this issue? I would have added like, added like the mental health and health factors because a lot of students like freak out and they get really nervous and a lot of the tests even come with instructions on what to do if someone vomits on the test and that's really not healthy. Mm -hmm. So I would have wanted to look into like the, um, the effects it has on students, both okay. mentally and physically. Thank you.